In this video, I will show you how to make this exact simulation in Blender using the Flip Fluids add-on. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so start off by pressing G, Set, then 1, and then press S, then Shift Z to scale it only on the X and Y axis. Then press Tab for edit mode, select the top face and press G, then Set to grab that face on the Z axis. Then you can press S, then Shift Z again. And then next, we're going to go into the physics settings and make this into a domain. If you do not have flip fluids, you can get it in the link in the description. And then I'm going to save it, save it wherever you want on the computer. And then next, we're going to increase the resolution. If you have a slow computer, I recommend 200. If you have a fast one, 300. And then I'm going to set the preview to 300 as well. And this will be the resolution of the fluid simulation inside the domain. And then press Ctrl Shift S to create another save. And then next we can press Shift D to duplicate, press Tab for edit mode, then G, Set to grab the top face on the Z-axis. This is going to be the water, and then we can import an object which interacts with the water. So .obj, and you can find free objects in the link in the description. So I'm just going to download the crab, make sure to unzip it, and then open it in Blender. Okay, and then press S to scale it down. And then press R, X, then minus 90. And then we can press G, then set to grab it on the Z axis. And then press R, then X, to rotate it on the x-axis. So something like this. Then next, we need to turn this crab into an obstacle. So we'll go to Flip Fluid, and then Obstacle. And then we can increase the friction as well. Okay, and then we need to select the water and change the type from Domain to Fluid. The next step in the tutorial is to select the crab press N, and then we can animate the uh, movement of the crab. So press I and I to keyframe. And then let's go to frame 70, for example, press G then set to grab it on the z-axis, and then R then set to rotate it on the z-axis. And then press I and I to keyframe. I'm just going to change the rotation of the crab slightly on frame 70. Just going to drag it and then press I to update the keyframe. And then we can save once again. And then we can bake the simulation. So select the domain, which is the border of the simulation. And then click bake to bake the simulation. And after an overnight baking, this is the result. So I'm just going to save one more time. Then next we can press Shift A to add. Add a plane, press S to scale, and then we can grab it on the Z axis. So press G, then set to grab it on the Z axis. And then next, we're going to add a background image for some better lighting for the water. So environment texture, open, and you can find free background images in the link in the description. So uh, just choose any of these HRIs and then open the image. Then we can also increase the strength of the background image to make it brighter. So the strength to two, for example. And then we're going to use cycles, use a GPU if you have one, and also enable the transparent background so that you can't actually see the background image, but it still affects the lighting of the scene. Okay, and then we're going to make the glass transparent as well, which is the water material. Then select the water, and then give it a glass shader. And set the roughness to zero. As you can see, we now have the water. You can also set the IOR to 1.33, if you want the water to be even more realistic. Okay, and then you can press R twice to rotate the sun freely. So 
we're going to use a combination of uh, the background image and the sun for the lighting. And then for the crab, I'm going to use a subsurface scattering material. It is usually used for skin, but I think it looks nice on this crab as well. And then you can edit the color. So just play around with the different colors and the materials. For the plane, I'm going to give it a simple glossy material. I'm going to speed up this part because I spent a lot of time with the materials. And then we can also add a sphere. And then add an emission material. I'm going to make it uh, orange. And then increase the strength. Then you can press numpad 7. Press S to scale. And then press Shift D to duplicate. Like this. You can also change the roughness of the water if you want to. And then select all of these spheres. And then press S to scale. And you can also press Shift D, then Set to add some additional ones on the Z axis. Okay, and then next we need to set up the camera. So I'm just going to say one more time, and then press Control Alt Notepad Zero, set the camera to the current point of view, and then lock the camera to view. And I'm going to decrease the number of samples for the render to save time, and then I'm also going to make the uh, format squared. You can also set it to 1080p by 1080p if you want to look at it at a 1080p monitor or add it to Instagram. At this point, we're almost done with the tutorial. So uh, this is the time to do the uh, small changes to the materials and so on if you want to. And then next, I'm going to animate the camera. So uh, select the camera. Go into item, and then press I and I to keyframe. Then go to the last frame, and I'm going to set the camera around here. You can animate the camera however you want to. Press I and I to keyframe. And now we have a camera animation as well. You can also press R then set to rotate the plane, and S to scale. Okay, so uh, next we're going to find an output folder for the final animation and then create a new folder, give it a name. Okay, so now we're ready for the final render. So just save one more time, and then go to render, and then render animation. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, and subscribe for more.